How'd you do that? Literally changed it. <laughs> well, how did you do that, though? What do you mean, how did There's I do that? There's a button there? Yeah. Oh, he walked over. <laughs> so frustrating. You pressed the that was easy button. Pretty much. Like... <laughs> I'm not retarded. I can read, you know? It's just like, I plug all the things in, and then they don't work. And I'm like, well, that's all I got. You have to plug all the things in and touch all the things. I can't touch, be touching things. That's literally all we do in this D&D game. Touch all the things. We touch things and say hello. Like, oh, this God. is probably a bad idea, but I'm not not going to touch it. Yeah. Oh my God. Wolf and I were going through the Final Fantasy storyline for the expansion, and there's literally a moment where someone, like, there's a ghost that appears, and the guy's like, I'm going to go say hi. And he walks <laughs> over, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, that's us. And then Wolf messages me. He's like, oh, look, he's taking the note out of your book. I'm like, God damn it. It's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Okay. Everybody's good now. No, no more monitors on the wrong channel. Anything like that? I don't think so. My monitors seem to be oh. working. I need to grab my for anybody handbook. else. He was a bit louder today. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna turn him down a little bit. It's because you had me turned up when uh, I had that patch update that screwed my sound. Oh. Up. Yeah. All right. Well, he's grabbing a book. I'm also gonna grab a book. Uh, be ready with your recaps here in a minute. A book. I've purchased the player's handbook like three times over. I feel oh, obligated really? to use it at least like once a session. Why did you buy it so many times? Well, I bought the the full package for Fantasy Grounds. Oh, so I, could I see. Have all the content outside of the game. Right. And then I bought the collector's edition bundle, which has custom covers, but I feel bad like ruining the spines by opening those books. So, <laughs> so then I bought a bought regular edition one. version that I could use. Yeah. Okay. Let's begin. Uh, I don't know how much content we'll get through tonight. Hopefully we'll make it out of the, uh, the crypt. That'd be nice. Um, where is that? There we go. Um, yeah, it'd be real neat if we made it out of there. Uh, if we don't, you know, kind of sucks, but, uh, that's the baseline. I do have a little bit of extra fun stuff prepared if we do. Um, when we exit the crypt shortly thereafter, you will be leveling up. So I want to make sure you have all prepared your ninth level information. Yeah. Because... Yes. The plan is, when we exit the crypt, we will take our break, uh, and we'll make it an extra long break, so we'll do 15 or 20 minutes instead of just 10, so that everybody can go ahead and level up. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right, let's do recap, and then hope, streams, and speculations, and get going. Okay, cool. Uh, so last session, we started off at the uh, doorway with a bunch of runes around it and a warning to not enter and to make the people of this land suffer and all that sort of good stuff again. Um, and trying to figure out how to open it because apparently we don't care about warnings at all. Uh, so we spent a lot of time actually doing that, uh, discussing with the uh, other group a little bit about what they were trying and they tried all the basic stuff of looking for nooks and uh, like trying to pry it open, push it open, all that sort of stuff. Uh, luckily, we had the bracelet that Pedalin eventually put on with a little bit of blood to help guide our way in. Uh, not exactly sure if it was, in fact, the bangle itself or if it was the blood or a com combination of the two, but... Either way, we were able I'll to just, get... I'm going to answer that so that you know. It okay. was the combination of the two. Okay. So we got the door open, and uh, as soon as people started walking in, we noticed that the runes were going down, meaning that it was likely going to be at least a trip for only a couple of us that were able to go in. Um, 
which meant that some people had to stay behind and us being the player characters, obviously, we decided to push our way through while the NPCs get to wait outside and chill. Um, after, after, I mean, like a whole bunch of exposition stuff happened with our characters and gods and stuff in between that and during that time, which I'm sure we'll get more into at some point in this session and more discussion into. But um, at that point, we just started walking down these creaky old stair this creaky old staircase into a crypt and uh came upon a hallway with a large door at the end and four doors on either side of which or two doors on either side of which we decided to start with one that turned out to be what seemed to be like maybe a watchman's dormitory of some sort or um just like an entryway sort of thing with a few beds that were molded and a skeleton near a desk with a dagger and a note stuck through his rib cage uh, saying, I can't remember what it said now. It was like, I won't. I refuse. Me. I refuse. Yeah. And uh, I'll pass it off to Homer from there. Okay. The other thing about these, everywhere we're going, there were like dead mosquitoes everywhere. Uh, in that room, Udnar found a a wand and a ring. Uh, the next door had an expired magic trap on it. We found a bunch of scroll cases in there. Uh, and I think a bunch of like decayed scroll cases were in there too i'm trying to remember we found three scrolls of mending and two create food and water ones i think is what i have written uh we found what the next door we went into was an equipment room there was an old rusted flail but kind of nothing else worth anything then there was a storage room isaac took a, a water skin which somehow was okay and had water in it and then we we took a rest and uh cut and in that time we went over the uh the magic items we had we spent time focusing on the magic items we had gotten from the forgotten so we've got a cloak of protection a handy haversack uh plus one leather armor that can you can change your appearance at will uh the talking sword uh that was just the 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 blade that the main forgotten had been wielding it talked and we also found that it had eaten all the metal in the pit and uh kept calling us idiots devouring edge which turns out to be able to uh it's a plus one weapon that can transform into anything it's eaten any weapon that it's eaten. Any weapon it's eaten, yeah. Uh, so then we went forward. Isaac almost fell into uh, or fell into a pitfall trap, but Misty stepped out before it went bad. And then there was a octagonal room with four golden pedestals and four doors that was a a puzzle about light that we then had to solve and I'll pass it on from there. We somehow magically solved the puzzle in record time, given our group history. <laughs> uh, and after doing so, a, a staircase opened up in the middle of the room, leading even further down. And even though we're well aware there were traps, was kind of headstrong whilst onto the staircase, activating a trap, causing rushing water to knock Darby and Egg to the bottom of the staircase. Uh, led to a door with four locks on it, which we didn't seemingly have keys for. Was it the door that was also magically trapped in addition to the locks? At the bottom of the staircase? Yeah. 
Wasn't the one where my roll sounded very iffy and I kind of just smudged it away? It was trapped, and yes, you did just on a whim decide to smudge the rune to see if that would deactivate the magic. Yeah. It also yeah, it seemed like that great, but... the, uh, the traps were meant to keep something in rather than keep anyone out, so it seemed like they were less dangerous for us on the way we were going than they would have been otherwise. Just in general. Well, somehow, luckily, getting through five skill checks and opening the door, uh, we were presented with a, a room with a large golem, and the whole group was wary about somehow activating this thing and not wanting to get into combat, being a little worse for wear from previous encounters. And Darby hitting every trap with his face, apparently. Uh, getting stuck in that room for a little bit, we kind of just decided, okay, let's go ahead and step on the one obvious uh, floor trap. It activated the golem, and it did tell us that it's been... Uh, I don't have it written down, but it was a 1,127 years. Quite the, the length of time since someone had been down here uh the golem assuming we were here for maintenance opened the way into the chamber that we are currently in where there has been a uh very body horror type deal going on with uh a head in a cage floating above a chair and uh, a spinal column just kind of sitting there strapped in uh, we did hit an encounter with some thralls and this is where it became very apparent that we were dealing with a vampire. Are you passing it to me? Mm-hmm. Yes, so we did have a fight with the uh, two figures who had seemed to be uh, kneeling around a pool at the far end of the chamber. Uh, other than the head with a crown in a cage suspended over a throne that has a rib cage and a spinal column, spinal column strapped into it, the way uh, Rumble said. Uh, there also seems to be a strange layout to the floor in which the area around the throne and leading up to the pool is filled with like a dark sand that has uh, like salt water in it or possibly running through it. Um, I th I think Egg and Petalin both got bit by the two thralls. Uh, and we we barely squeaked out of that fight with our lives all together, but we were able to um, uh, defeat them thanks to Udinar's powerful sacred flame and light just burning the heck out of them. Uh, after taking a nice big spike to the chest from this little desk drawer side table here at the far end, uh, Darby is feeling a little bit more wary about, you know, just touching things and, and even more uh, traps. But we are still all alive, thankfully, and wanting to get out of this very creepy chamber. Um, I think there was a little bit of discussion about trying to get the crown out of the cage, but uh, as of yet, we haven't made any other, many other moves after regrouping um, after our fight with the thralls. So, uh, We'll just roll right into expectations, I suppose, for the session. Um, in this room... We can see that there are two other doors leading into possibly what could be some side chambers. I suspect that we may find more... If if we do end up going into those chambers, I suspect we will find more body parts to the supposed Twice King's body, which is, you know, locked and hacked up the way that it is. Um, I would very much like not to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But... Uh, Mostly, mostly we just want to find signet ring and get out. That's, that's what I'm hoping we'll do. And I'll pass it off there. Yeah, putting Voltron back together is definitely not the play. I don't think. Um, 
I feel like at minimum I'm going to hit at least two more traps. <laughs> given how, <laughs> how rolls have been going. Um, the the biggest part I'm interested in is how our conversation with the, the NPCs who kind of locked out is going to go because we still have a, a deal to uphold. And the things we have found so far, we have no idea what they are and even if they're worth anything. So... I'm concerned there's going to be a little strife there. Someone's going real fast. Oh. Yep. Sorry, let me. Just I like how it no, started it's, it's, on it's, her it's, microphone and then continued on yours. <laughs> yeah, because, because I spoke. <laughs> like I said, he's going real fast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's uh, cool because now we know that he's cool. Yeah. Oh, he's cool. That's why he did it. That's how that Got works. It. Yeah. It's Santa. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Yeah. So my my suspicion is there's something else that's gonna be trouble down here before we can uh, get out of here as we're looking for the the signet ring. Um. And then we'll have to deal with, you know, the the people, the NPCs we left behind, as Rumble said. Um, yeah, I don't know what what my my expectations are for things to happen. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know this week. <laughs> yeah. We've got um, fucking Dracula here, and we have to not put him back together. So, I expect we're gonna do something to fuck up, and we will put him back together, <laughs> and have to negotiate or fight our way through, and it's going to be trouble. But um, if we can avoid that, that would be real good. So we should try not we're all to. Become vampire thralls. And... Yeah. That doesn't going to take a, a whole different turn. Doesn't sound yeah. It's going to turn into vampire <laughs> masquerade by the end. Um. Yeah. yeah. No. I guess my expectation is we get out of this crypt somehow in some way. Um. I'm gonna level up or die trying, and I expect we'll be out of here with the signet ring at least by the end of this session. Um, if not earlier, so that's probably my expectation. I mean, clearly we're gonna make it out of here because we are chosen by the I, gods, yeah, I, yeah, to live. I would like to point out that uh, I know that we've been focusing really hard on the signet ring and everything like that, but it it occurred to me the other day that that's just our lead, and we don't actually know if it's here or not. It, True, there it may or may not actually be in here. So I just don't want us to get, like, blinders on, oh, it's a signal ring, you know, because that would be totally my fault because I have focused on it for the last two sessions. For all we know, so. what the ring we found at the very beginning that I have currently might be the thing they were looking for. Right. So we don't know. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we want relics that aren't going to secretly bring back a vampire or something or be bad yes. and but, maybe some I mean, crappier ones so like say this is all we found and give it away to the other group <laughs> to appease uh -huh. wow no lie, i really want to keep this other <laughs> armor because i am so squishy i need to take a look at Thank some you. people's alignments <laughs> <laughs> got to appease them man you told us not to set those yeah i did the your your alignment is determined by your actions and i'm definitely uh Keep a track. <laughs> We're clearly the evil party. No! I'm clearly doing what's in the best interest for us. How many dogs have we killed? Don't talk about that. <laughs> oh! All of them. That was a different character, too. I mean, how many princesses have you killed? <laughs> I guess that's more important than 
Yeah. <laughs> the one time. I forget yeah, heroes that. heroes don't usually kill princesses, but um anyway. <laughs> without further ado, uh I don't actually remember what the very last thing that happened. So um I believe that was Darby getting stunned and <laughs> yeah. staked by the, the end table. It was. Yeah, yeah, and I believe that he was mm. keeping that stake for himself, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> So you find yourself still. In... Oh, go ahead. We found some rod on the vampire ashes, Celeste. Did I have? Mm. Uh, oh, we were... oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I have my notes here. <laughs> Good to know. Um, All right. Um, so you found a rod in the ashes of the the thralls, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you find yourselves deep within the recesses of the tomb of the Twice King. Um, the pool before you is uh, still still there. Uh, the throne with the rib cage and spine uh, still sitting in the, the gray wet sand. The cage is still suspended above it. Uh, via oh. chains, which were not destroyed or tampered with. And you have the lovely end table with a couple of wine glasses and several bottles and a mirror. Actually, I think I think there was something at the bottom of the pool, if you wanted the, to describe yes, it again. Yes, there um, is something at the bottom of the pool. Did I have something written for that, or did I just run that? Looks like I just ran it. So yeah, there's an object at the bottom of the pool. Uh, it appears to be encased... Uh, well, so your vision is distorted by the water and the fact that there's no light. So, uh, with I, your dark I, vision I, alone, you can only see. Or, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Sorry, I, I just, I don't really have any notes on it. It just says object with things stuck through it. <laughs> yes. So at the bottom of the pool, uh, with with your dark vision alone, you can see that there. There is an object, and it looks as though it, it is pierced through with something. Uh, can I do an intelligence roll to see if Egg knows anything about vampires, rather than? Uh, would he? I mean, he's, like, do you have do you been on a do you boat? Have just, just like right. If he's like heard stories about them, is sure. Really what okay, I then, then yeah, yeah, you can you can you can make an int roll for that. Uh, do you want me to do it in the? tower or no no you can or... do it public it's fine okay nice he is not. nope <laughs> he knows nothing okay so i will i will purge all my actual um, vampire knowledge from my brain <laughs> if anybody else that has no justification wants to know if they happen to know anything about vampires uh the dc is an 18 yeah would previous dungeon delving experience for darby um, have any inkling? I'll give you a 15 DC. No, 16. Okay. I mean, fuck it, I'll roll to an 18. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> I'm right. guessing it would still be an 18, even though uh, Petalin's technically descended from elves, but not these elves. This is knowledge of vampires, not knowledge of elves. Well, they they come from an elf kingdom. I suppose the story might have been passed down, but no. not there. There would be no reason for it in elf. So, okay. All right then. So no, nobody knows any of the secrets of vampirism. Sounds about right. Oh. This room is fucking weird. <laughs> Are you in a new... Oh, yeah, you moved, didn't you? No, not yet. No. Oh, I'm okay. I'm moving the 20th. Oh, yeah. okay, I gotcha. Got pushed back. Well, Egg, we'll have it. go get it. <laughs> I'm not going down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looking over the edge, how deep is this basin? Uh, is there a light source in the room? Well, I had a torch, but I can't remember if it was extinguished during our well, fight with the thralls or not. We will presume think... that it was extinguished. 
you rolled a percentile and rolled high enough that it stayed lit. Oh, okay. Then there is a light source. And so uh, even by the light of the torch, uh, the distortion of the water makes it so it's difficult to see the, the object down below. But it looks to be probably close to 10 feet. Like, it's deep. For all we can tell, this is normal water? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we could smell like mm -hmm. the salt water. Like the salt water. Yeah. It, yes. Is that is that what you meant by normal yeah. water? I don't know what normal means. Yeah, like, I guess that, it, like, seawater smell. Oh, oh, fresh water or salt water? Uh, like it salt smells water. briny. Yeah, okay. So I'm guessing we want to go and fish that thing out? See what it is? Yeah. Do we, do we particularly want to be touching it? <laughs> That's a good point. It's Who knows? It's probably trapped or chained or Lord only knows what to the bottom of that pool. We got rid of the sea clearly underwater goggles, right? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you had to be attuned to them. Oh, that's right. Well, don't everybody jump up at once. All right, I'll go check it out. Yeah, you're tall. Udnar. Yeah, you being the tallest up here. <laughs> oh right, yeah. So you're gonna hop into the pool or what? Tell me what. Tell me what you do. Yeah, are you I... gonna be able to see down there? Though is the question. I'll like. I guess I'll sit on the ledge first and just kind of like dip legs in and just make sure like I don't get pulled under for a moment before jumping in or something. Uh, you you feel a strong a tingling toe. sensation in uh, in your legs as you dip them into the water. Would you call this a good or a bad tingle? Like a burning <laughs> or like a pleasant? <laughs> Neither. It's almost like your legs feel asleep. I pull like them bad, out. <laughs> like needle pricks. Um, sure. Hmm. You, uh, as, as the water lingers on your skin, you feel that same tingling pins and needles sensation all over uh, anywhere that it touched. Guys, I don't know about this water. I feel tingly. Could be like. magic. Um, I guess the three that are not Udinar would notice that his holy symbol uh, is faintly aglow. You're uh, glowing there, big guy. Huh? And I'll look at it, I guess. So it's just glowing with like a light? A, a very faint glow to it. I'm going to, like, hold it in my hand and dip it in the water. Um, like, your hand in the water, or, like... With so the I, symbol. I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing, like, a necklace. Yeah, like, I'll take and it off. And, like, hold are, you it. Holding, are you holding it by the chain and dipping the symbol in, or are you holding the symbol in your hand and dipping your hand in? The symbol and the hand. I don't want it to, like, fall. Okay. Sure. So as you submerge your hand in the water, you feel that same numbing, tingling sensation, uh, but the symbol itself begins to glow very brightly. Oh, I get it. You do? Well, okay, technically it's meta gaming, so I can't. Yeah, say she it, she meta gets it. Yeah, you can say. I, oh, but she I meta, meta gets it. it. Oh, okay. I meta yeah. get it. Meta get it. You meta get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, exactly that, like that. Term is now trademarked and copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> meta get it. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm not exactly like worried seeing it glow, but it's a little unusual. You know what? I'm gonna like put it back on and jump fully in to the pool. What? I'm uh, try so Udinara dons his holy symbol and then prepares to leap into the pool. Uh, seeing Edelin desperately as... grabs at his tunic or okay. whatever clothing you wear. Okay, sure. I'll stop think, and say uh, what. 
What are you doing? You just said it made you get all tingly and weird. And now you're glowing? What? Well, don't go in well, there. He's not glowing. The holy symbol is glowing very well, sure, brightly. Sure. I, yeah, yeah. I, I know what I mean. I it's know all... you know what you mean. Don't tell me what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's obviously a sign, right? Why would it glow otherwise? Well, I, I mean... He has a fair point. Yeah. Well, I guess he's the holy man. We'll let go of him, I guess. Okay. Okay. Udenar, do you really gonna... into the pool? I do. <laughs> okay. As Udenar uh, steps over the rim and he quickly plunges beneath the surface of the water, uh, Udenar, make a constitution saving throw. Oh, here we go, boys. Oh, Lord. We should have tied a rope around him or something. So... I think this is a plus one because of my cloak. I couldn't have add, I couldn't add it with the uh, saves. Uh, what do you have? Cloak of protection? Yeah, that's AC. I think not saving throws. Uh, you should have the item in there. Uh, I thought. Yeah, we added it to you, so you have it and it's worn. Mm -hmm. Plus one to AC and saving throws while wearing this. It should have automatically added it. Oh, okay. If it what automatically. What you can do added. is if you. Well, if you, I don't know, my item's wonky too, because I get plus one to all saves. If you hold control and then scroll wheel, it'll put a plus or minus modifier by your saving throw. Oh, really? Okay. Did, do, do you know if it adds it automatically wearing it, though? Mm, I, I see special defenses, to... cloak of protection plus one, but I'm not seeing it on the saving throw. Yeah, I added it there myself so I could, like, see mm. that I have it. I see. Uh, well, hold on one second. Look, look, watch your character sheet. Okay. Are you and wa and watch the AC? Okay. Did it change? No. How about now? No. No, that's not changing at all. Uh, what about? Interesting. Can is there a way to view the breakdown of your armor? That's what I was wondering too. That would be really nice. Uh, so, where's your armor? Cause uh, by your AC, if you get the magnifying glass. Yeah, I added the misc plus you. one for the thing. Do I have to change that every time, though? Uh, no. Oh, like if I take shouldn't. off the cloak? I'm just, I'm just, I'm really, oh yeah, if you, if you yeah. remove the cloak, you'd have to change it, because it, it doesn't look like that one's actually going automatically. I guess it doesn't count for whatever reason. So yeah, we'll just add one to that. So that's a five. Mm -hmm. And you've already taken care of it on your uh, armor, so we'll leave that there. Um, okay, so Udenar plunges into the pool. Uh, Udenar, you suddenly find yourself entirely numb, and thus, with very little sensory ability to control your limbs. Um, so swimming is going to be exceedingly difficult. Uh, Unfortunately for you, however, or I, I guess unfortunately for everybody, uh, iron bars shoot out from the edges of the pool itself, closing off the top, and then in sequence around a ring, several glowing lights appear uh, within the pool itself, uh, illuminating it fully and just dousing it in extreme sunlight. Everybody else would need to avert their gaze or be momentarily blinded. Uh, so Udenar is now numb and blind beneath the water. And, uh, what do you do? Uh, oh. You also, well, I, I guess you wouldn't feel because you're numb, but uh, everybody else can hear that the water begins to churn and whirl. Like, boiling kind of whirling? No, no, like it's moving. Oh, okay. Can... You can even see that Udenar is buffeted several times by uh, what look to be some sort of shock waves beneath the beneath the water. So are the are the iron bars that closed over the top beneath their surface so that he could not stick his head up above the surface? They are at the surface. Okay, so he could potentially like get his head up in between the bars. Potentially. Potentially. Mm -hmm. okay. Depends on how fat his head is. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I guess okay, I would like so... wildly reach around to see if I could feel anything like to help 
grab on to sure. or something. Sure. Um, so like you're not since lit, you know, you, you don't have no senses. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like your entire body is now numb. Um, like that pins and needles all over. So e every move is just like that uncomfortable agony. And uh, you notice like even underwater that the, the bright runes, like the one of them will, will pulse and then you'll get buffeted from that direction and the water churns and spins. Um, in the interim though, there's nothing really to grab onto in the pool itself. And uh, if you want to try to swim to the surface or swim down, you can make the athletics check, but it's a disadvantage. You know what? I'm here for a reason. I'm going to swim down towards whatever is at the bottom. Okay. Well, I, I mean, wearing it. your armor, there's no swimming down. You sink like a rock. Uh, <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, uh, so. You, you know, after a few moments, you will indeed reach the bottom where and you see what looks to be uh, the like a lump inside of a, maybe a case of some sort that is transparent, and then you can see that it is pierced through um, by, by another object. Am I able to lift it? Um, make a disadvantage strength check. Disadvantage strength, okay. Uh, tug as you might, you find that the object seems to be firmly rooted to the bottom of the pool, though no obvious anchor would illuminate why. Okay, um... I'm going to try swimming up to the top to get a gasp of air. Oh, you can hold your breath a long time. What are you talking okay. about? Okay. It's like double con score rounds or something. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 5e, hold breath. Creature can hold its breath. Whoa, what? <laughs> That's even crazier. Oh. Are you kidding me? A number of minutes equal to one plus constitution modifier. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, what? Um... <laughs> oh, modifier. We're that's actually to... not that much, now that I see it. Minutes? That means if you have, I mean, I guess, I guess if 10 is the average constitution, then that means that, you know, people can hold their breath for 30 seconds. That makes sense. You're a supernatural sort of creature thing. So, um, I'm going to house rule that real quick and say it's 30 seconds per con mod so that it's a little bit less. Okay. Like I can hold my breath for 10 minutes because or six minutes. <laughs> um, Anybody thinks that they can that, that, that I can hold my breath yeah. for three minutes, they are yeah. bonkers. So, so it's thirty seconds plus half a minute for per con mod. So you you can hold your breath for a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. So you're fine right now. You don't need a you don't need a gas for air or anything. You just okay. Numb and tingly. During and every this movement time, is uncomfortable. Can I, uh, fashion my grappling hook to some rope. You certainly so can. We're gonna go um, fishing. Yeah. So let's say that takes. So let um, we're gonna start a a pseudo round counter here. Um, I need. I wish I had. It'd be really nice if I had a, a means of doing that easily. But we'll do it this way. Uh, so that would be two rounds. Okay. Uh, egg and pedal in. Uh, uh, I'm gonna start me. Okay. I'm gonna start searching the room for. I want to start looking for anything like the pressure plate, like we saw in the previous room, that would suggest a way to reset the pool. Okay. Because uh, if they were doing me... maintenance, there must be a way to reset it. An investigation check. Uh, that's good. That takes a that takes a minute. So, um, because you're not you're not gonna find it in six seconds, you know. That, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Darby, you now have a grappling hook attached to a rope. 
you know, hand one end to, to egg and then slip through the, the hooked end through one of the uh, slits in the bars that came across. Okay. How, how big are the openings between bars? Uh, you wouldn't be able to squeeze through them, but only just. Like, pedaling could not fit between them. Okay, but at least enough to, like, wrap an arm through to, like, hold yourself above water and, like, stick your head through. Um, yeah, you could probably do that. Although Udinar has, again, got fat meat arms because he's a big, big, giant furball. But he could probably squeeze, in a, squeeze a hand through, at least. All right, well, we're going fishing and hoping to get lucky and maybe snag him, have the current okay. take the hook and get near him. Okay, uh, so there isn't really a regular current that you could predict or follow. Um, you're, in fact, not entirely sure what's causing the water to move. Uh, only Udinar was able to discern that from his uh, unique vantage point. So as the grappling hook fishing line gets lowered you notice that it's just getting buffeted around uh and like it's it's a pretty strong push uh because like it, it it'll pull the rope in your hands even uh when it gets pushed but uh from where you are now give me a mm. oh what skill would that be let me look at the skills. Give me a sleight of hand at disadvantage. No luck, uh, as the, the hook is just being pushed way too wildly in any given direction. All right, it's all up to him now. Okay. Um, I mean, we would call that a new round, so Pedalin is still searching. Egg, you have helped Darby. Uh, you know, if you were going to help him fish as well, I suppose that would negate the disadvantage, because that does give advantage. It is something that I would say you could help with. Uh, okay. So that would have been still just not enough. You can try again this round if you'd like, but uh Yeah, I'm still going wanted... to assist Darby with whatever his okay. his plan is. Okay. Udinar, do you do anything? Um I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try taking off my armor because I can feel it's hampering my movement as well. Uh that takes a while. Yeah. Yeah, it takes like uh, fifteen minutes to well. What? Armor, it? Uh, it depends. Let's see. Getting into and out of armor. What are you wearing? Medium or heavy? Medium. Uh, it'll take a minute. Yeah, I'll start now then. Okay. Um, and I would actually argue it would probably take longer because, because you of are underwater. Numb. Sure. Yeah. Well, and and underwater. So. Um, anybody on the surface will be able to see that he has begun fidgeting with his clothing. Um, all right, Darby, try fishing again, if that's your goal. <laughs> the best idea I've got. Yeah, that's a good roll. Um, so as Udinar's hands are working at one of the straps of his armor, uh, you are able to, you know, you get lucky enough and, and the, the hook gets pushed in just such a way that it's able to snag him. And then I'm just going to yell out, pull. And that's going to be our next action for Egg and I to yank him. Oh, no, no, no. You can go ahead and make, um, both of you go ahead and roll strength. Honestly, not bad. Uh, Udinor, you have begun to be in, you have begun getting hauled to the surface. 
Okay. Um, so I guess we would roll back around, pedal in, still searching. Uh, do you do anything in regards to being hauled to the surface? I mean, I tried to, like, swim or push in that direction to help. Okay. Um, you can make athletics at disadvantage. Okay. Yep, continuing to help, so... Uh, try as you might, it's mostly awkward flailing with no real feeling in your limbs, and again, that just that sh agonizing discomfort with every movement. Uh, but as Darby and Egg continue to pull you uh, upward, you do eventually reach the top, and uh, through some small manner of luck, are able to press your face just against the bars and get your lips above the surface of the water, even as it churns. So you could speak, uh, though it's going to be like in terms of flavor, it will be awfully gargly because there there's little waves at the surface that'll splash over your face every once in a while. Yeah, I'm not going to waste air doing that. Mm. Uh, you can also draw breath. So yeah, um, and then uh, I will allow you to to cling to the bars, um, just because you do have rather raw uh, lifting and carrying capability, so you can hold yourself there, suspended in the water. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So on the plus side, he's not dead. Mm -hmm. So if no conversation is happening in the meantime, uh, I, I, we can move on, but do you guys want to say anything? Well, I'd, I'd let them know what I was looking for. Sure. Yeah, and every once and a big fat nice. I told you so to Udnar for jumping in the pool. <laughs> uh, once Udnar is like you know secured in a mm -hmm. place, not drowning, I would go to help pedal and look for okay, to save um, the trap. So you can also roll investigation, all right. And Darby, what are you doing? Uh, if he has an arm through from the the slack of the rope mm -hmm. past the grappling hook, I'm going to try and secure it around his arm just so we have a better hold on him if he does slip away. Sure. And I, I assume you tell him that. I mean, I suppose. <laughs> Would he really resist? I mean, it's more like... <laughs> He's he's only got his mouth above the surface because it's like uh, basically just like imagine a giant hot tub with the bubbles on only more violent, <laughs> like a wave machine. He's basically really in a wave pool. Because ears are I mean, underwater. Yeah, you can hear underwater. Mm -hmm. With the with the jets going. Yeah, because they're not making noise. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. Okay. Well, um, Darby is going to affix Udinar's hand to the rope, it seems. Okay. Uh, so what do you do after that? I'm going to... I'm the only one holding the rope now, so I'm going to stand at the edge. Like, oh, okay. Okay. Preparing myself right. if he gets yanked away. Uh, so as the expert master sleuths uh, peddle in an egg whose entire career is all about finding traps and gadgets and things like that continue their, their endeavor, um, it takes some time, but eventually egg quite literally stumbles across what looks to be a, a loose uh, stone or brick in the side of the, like the raised edge of the pool. Um, and it seems as though you could quite easily maybe uh, turn or rotate this this particular stone. Uh, I let Pedalin know what I found. Okay. Pedalin, who is inspecting the far side of the room on her hands and knees, <laughs> kind of gets up well, and hurries over. Mm-hmm. Found a thing. A thing. In, embedded it in the side of the of the pool, which is raised. Yeah. 
looks like a switch maybe. So it maybe could let Utnar out, or it could be bad. I don't know. Well, it's our best hope for right now to get him out. Hey, Darby? Today would be nice. Could you switch okay. with Egg and come look at this, please? I suppose. Right. Egg, go I'll go over Nar. there to hold the rope. Right. The Darby. Right, they switch places. The button. Darby, you are presented. Was that a hey Google I heard? This is Google responding to me yelling, hey Darby. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so Darby, you, you are now looking at this object in the side of the pool. It's like a round mortar stone, uh, which it doesn't have any mortar around it. And so as Egg was running his hand along the side of the pool, he, he did indeed snag it. And uh, on first glance, you can see that there is a couple of different things you can do here. You can push it, you can pull it, you can twist it. Maybe you could bop it, I don't know. <laughs> would a, a thorough investigation give me more of an inkling of how the mechanism works sure especially if you roll well uh so your first inclination is that there are multiple mechanisms involved here and that this seems to be the the means of controlling resetting or, or reactivating each of them so you feel that each of the the three things that i told you would produce a different effect We can we can pull it, we can twist it, and we can push it. Push it. Well, pulling and pushing is lame, so let's go ahead and twist. As you twist, uh, there is a loud, satisfying chunk as uh, the bars, you know, rip themselves free of Udenar's grasp and uh, slide back into their housing. Hey, first guess. Huzzah! Uh, Udenar is still being buffeted by the, the strong force within. Well, I'll attempt to pull him out then. Uh, disadvantage athletics check. Can I help him? Right. And you're and kind of... Out? Sure, yeah. You can, you can run over there and try to help. I'm helping! Hooray! Uh, uh, try as you might, Udenar, uh, in his full armor, even in the water, is still heavy... And uh, due to the force of the water, you're just not able to get any balance. And so uh, even though you pull, you don't really make any headway against the, the current within. All right. And I'm going to pull it. Uh, as you pull it, the lights go out. But he is still being buffeted. I'm going to pull it again to turn the lights back on, but then push it. Okay. Uh, as you pull it a second time, the runes relight, uh, and pushing it back in seems to stop the churning of the waves. Uh, Udenar is still well, now being dragged to the edge, I'm assuming, by Egg, uh -huh. uh, whereupon he can be hauled bodily over uh, with the assistance of Petalin. Uh, Udenar, you are free of the uh, lukewarm grasp of uh, your watery depths. After catching my breath, like, fully, I'll say, all right, I'll go back in and grab it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we still oh, don't yeah. have it. So, like, I'll, yeah. grab, I'll take the rope and then I'll help you guys haul it out. Mm -hmm. It was okay, too heavy. But maybe take your armor off first. So we would need to do like stabbed though. <laughs> well, I you know what? I guess you don't have to because we can just haul you out. Yeah, I'm. If anything is going to help, walk at the bottom of the water. So fair enough. Because <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. now that we like have Darby on the controls, essentially, I'll go back sure. in and slowly like use the rope to I mean... find a way to secure it and pull it back out. Wouldn't you want the man who made a career at sea to go into the water? Oh, if you want to, you're, by all means. You are getting very crackly, by the way. That's unfortunate. 
Like if you're like I I would be better at this. Um I don't care if I do it. I'll stand on the edge and help pull you out for sure. I'm not crackly in my monitor. Is it just Discord? I think Are you guys Discord. hearing the crackle? I am yeah. for a little crackle, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just Rumble and just in Discord. Hmm. Anyway. Continuing onward. If you want to go in, by all means, I'll just warn you that it seems to make you a little numb, the water, but it seems safe enough besides that. You call that safe enough? Well, it wasn't the water that I was mean, the problem. It was everything else around it. <laughs> Meanwhile, keep in mind that Udinar's entire body is now, quote-unquote, asleep. And so, like, if he attempts to stand up, he'd probably fall over. Uh, even leaning on your own arm is incredibly difficult. Uh, so it, I imagine it would be comical. Uh, it's like watching a baby trying <laughs> to, to move. <laughs> Only this one is like eight feet tall and 600 pounds or something. In that regard, maybe it would be better if I go back in since I'm already like shaky, as it were, <laughs> numb. Uh, but I'm, I'm not here, here as heavy to pull up. Mm. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm not, I'm not here to steer you. I was just uh, offering flavor for those uh, with, with the imagination. So uh, the way I see this pull playing out is I'm about to go back in, and if Darby wants to step in, I won't, like, fight him over it. Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll explain the control mechanism to Pedalin. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have someone who knows how it works. Do you have your pistol? Uh, I wouldn't have despawned it after the fight. Okay. Oh, why it's gonna have some snarky remark? Because <laughs> we have two snarky weapons now. Oh lord! <laughs> I didn't say that. So much sass. <laughs> two snarky weapons that want to eat each other. I say we let them fight it out to the death. But if I'm going swimming, I would put my stuff aside. Sure. I'm not gonna go diving with the the haversack. Mm. Of course. But we know how fast you can swim. That's true. <laughs> okay. Well, I will strip everything off. Just, no, like the <laughs> the white you sailor shirt and yeah, pants. yeah. The, you you keep your small clothes on. <laughs> Woo! Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I'm going to take off the grappling hook, but fasten the rope around my waist. Okay. I'm going to dive in. Hey, right. I'd hold on uh, to the other end of that rope if I were you. Yeah. Are you wearing your Witcher medallion? I am, yes. Okay, so as Darby hits the water, there is a hissing sound that fills the room like steam. Uh, and indeed, there is a black sizzling smoke that seems to rise from the water. Uh, Darby, your vision is clouded now, despite the light, uh, by this, like, intense boiling that's going around, uh, near your medallion. Okay, well, that being annoying, I'm gonna swim back to the surface. Uh, make a disadvantaged athletics check. I know you have a swim speed, but this is, uh... Well, you know what? Non-disadvantaged. Just make an athletics check. Yeah, I'm pulling on the rope. To bring him back he's coming back okay yeah so he dies into the water you see him start flailing uh he starts swimming or trying to swim and egg just kind of hauls him out of the water bodily what uh even as that? the water like so as he's pulled out of the water you see that thick black like steam just like it's not just rising it's like fully expanding in all you know 360 degrees around his medallion Oh my gosh. I don't think the water likes you. Stupid thing. Can I like take it off and like slap it on the rim of the basin? Yeah. So you do that uh and like the you you hear a muffled something coming from your bundle of equipment and clothing 
uh, that you can't quite make out what's being said, you're pretty certain you know something, you know what is saying it. <laughs> With the, the medallion off, I'm going to yeah. dive back in. All right, so uh, all noodle-armed and noodle-bodied, uh, Darby once again submerges and uh, makes his way down to the bottom. Uh, with the pool fully lit and no churning chaos to, to dissuade you as, as Petalin expertly manages and mans the controls, uh, you see that it is indeed some sort of case, but it, it is appears to be anchored to the bottom by what look to be four chains. So it's like, all right, so imagine the bottom of the pool and then there's like a glass box over top of an object that's stabbed inside of it. And then beneath that, it looks like there's a grate or something which has four, you can see four individual chains attached to it, uh, going even deeper into the into the tomb. Holy and shit, I think I know what it is. Okay. Do you meta-get it? I think I meta-get it. <laughs> I've meta-got it since we encountered the pool you guys can say it if, i mean it, it's as long as it doesn't color your character's actions i'm happy for you to discuss your meta knowledge meta get it is so much funner though to say <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and, and well you can you can always say i meta get it and that's fine that just means that everything you say after that isn't character action it's it's uh personal knowledge mm -hmm. yeah Again, copyright trademark. Uh, I just made that up. It's mine. <laughs> uh, Medigate it was mine. Thank you very much. I said it. I said it. <laughs> There's a VOD. There is. Thus began the <laughs> divorce proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a good uh, can one I, anyway. Can I try to look at the item that is stabbing it and see if it is similar what stabbed me through the chest? It is. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, make a medicine check. I don't even know where medicine is on my fucking thing. Never well, they're in that. alphabetical order, so it's <laughs> where the M's are. Uh, through a very basic adventuring and cursory knowledge, you're pretty sure that the thing you're looking at is a heart. And even yeah. though it's staked and separated from its original inhabitant, you can see that it occasionally still beats. Maybe once, maybe once every thirty seconds or so. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna tug on the rope. Right. Um, pull him up. Egg, you feel the faintest twitch at the rope as Noodle Darby tries his best <laughs> to to tug. Um, you eventually pull the the practical carcass of your brother free, and uh, he flops away from the pool. Did you get it? I'm just gonna lay on the floor on my back, yeah. trying not mm. to move because every <laughs> yeah every twitch just sends a tingle yeah. through. <laughs> yes. Right, we don't I think want he that. didn't get it. What do you mean we don't want it? It's staying down there. It's. It's a heart. A heart? <laughs> and it's still beating. Oh, no. That sounds like magic. That sounds like something we don't want. Well, given that the other bits are spread across. Yeah. I we think just it's don't... better it stay down there. Well, I mean, we I'm can guessing... take one of them. We can take one bit. Can it not be that bit? <laughs> Let's take not that what, bit. You want to? What, you want to take like an arm? Well, I don't want to take a still beating, dismembered heart that's, that's probably, been down here for over eleven hundred years. That's probably a good spirit relic. It Dude, might power the city for a while if it's still beating. I mean, a heart? You always want to get hearts. <laughs> you always want to get hearts. <laughs> can can we put the heart as, like, plan F? Yeah, that's a little creepy. I didn't realize it's it was a, still beating. <laughs> it's it's still beating down there. Oops. It's creeping me out. Can we just look it's just a muscle. <laughs> it's just a muscle. It's a little. It's a little engine. It's doing a its little thing. Little engine that could. What is an engine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
a machine fuel thing. Mm. We're not an Eberron. Yeah, I wonder if they were called magic. siege engines before, you know, or if that's a modern term. Mm. Anyway, that's that's a side thought. Yeah. For it's now, Darby is laying on the floor trying his best not to make any movement until the feeling fades. Yeah. Same, though. I mean, if we try to take any other bits, we're going to have to look for how they're trapped. Pedalin wants to look at the smoking amulet. Um, I mean, Darby can describe what it looks like. What? Like, I assume that you haven't picked it back up yet? Yeah, it's still laying yeah. on the, I'm gonna the edge cap- there. I'm going to capitalize on the fact that no one's doing <laughs> anything, and I'm going to go take a good close look at it. Well, Rumble, tell her what it looks like. Which, actually, I had more art commissioned. Oh. Oh, really? Very fancy. <laughs> Which has the amulet in clear view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All I see nice. is, uh, actually, I'll just put. Nice. The amulet's so cute, though. So yes, for people without the image, it looks like a a brown blooper. Yeah, <laughs> brown blooper. Six eyes. It yeah. does. Six eyed blooper. All right. I want to touch it. Um, as you reach out to touch it uh, and place your finger on the surface, uh there is like a snap in your mind of like suddenly you were touching the object and then you felt like 10,000 miles away for the briefest second as though you were suspended in nothingness and all senses were gone and then you're right back where you were and you hear a slight sizzling where you're like pressing the water into the into the amulet itself gonna move my hand right back up off of that thing (sighs) Not going to touch that again. Why not? Was it bad? Yes, Egg, it was bad. Uh, That doesn't sound good. (laughs) (laughs) Are you touching my shit over there? Yes! (laughs) But But not like a lot, though. (laughs) Mm -hmm. He just can't do anything. (laughs) Not not like a lot. Just a little. I wasn't gonna um, like take it. But you better come it, get it, because I'm not I'm not bringing it to you. Udinar with your with your clothing soaked through uh and not really drying, uh you're still in that same unfortunate state, uh and will likely be for some time until you are dry. Uh, because at your ver- at the tips of your extremities where the water is beginning to evaporate or, or you know at least dry off or be wiped off, you do regain some uh, semblance of feeling. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it is what it is. We should keep looking yeah. around before right. we die. Anyway. I was letting you know that you had kind of sussed out that uh, as it dried you regained your ability to okay. feel and move so like I can like feel and move enough obviously to like walk and stuff normally currently mm, no you've got fingertips and toes or not even toes because you were wearing shoes you've got fingertips <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's enough to figure it out um, yeah. y- you'd still be stumbling around like a drunkard and thanks to the fact that you're wearing clothing it probably be a while okay unless you have some means of drying yourself otherwise i mean i could change clothing i suppose you know what maybe sure, i'll we'll do say that we'll see you dropped your backpack 
I'll change into you. I was probably wearing my winter clothes, I would assume. Let me take a look here. That would make sense. Yeah. I mean, we can just we can just say you were. So the heavy wool, which you know, fully soaked through. Uh, Udinar begins to awkwardly disrobe, uh, which I imagine is quite hard to do when all of your limbs are asleep. But he he slowly <laughs> is beginning to manage. Uh, would would prestidigitation kind of like dry it? I do not think so. Okay, because I know it can clean. Mm-hmm. I never moved yeah. blood before. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that it has drying ability so much as it can magically clean things. Because okay. I mean, they're remove water or destroy water might work. <laughs> I think that might be above my pay grade. <laughs> okay, I just changed clothes into my common clothes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Can I use frostbite to freeze it and try and, <laughs> and like smash it off? <laughs> Snap it off. Yeah. Give him frostbite. Let's see. Frostbite. Uh, I'm a frost farmer creature. You can see what the charm is. You could try. I'm not going to stop you. All right. I'm going to try and freeze myself. Okay. Uh,. So the frost is going to form regardless, but uh, make the con save to see if you take damage. For everyone to see my dumb idea. Uh, I think you failed your own save, and so I think you take 2d6 <laughs> damage. <laughs> <laughs> so worth yeah, it, though. So, so deal damage to hey. yourself. Um, as, the, as the frost permeates on your skin... Uh, what do you do? Try and move to, like, shatter it off? Sure. Uh, let's say that that seems to work, and, uh, you've frozen the, 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 not only the hoarfrost that you summoned with frostbite, but the water that was on you, uh, and so your arms and legs are free of it, uh, and you do begin to slowly regain feeling in them. Uh, your clothing, however, are now frozen and, you know, rigid and stiff. Now I'm going to take my clothes off. All right. Woo! So by this point, we've got a naked Darby and a nearly naked Udinar as they prepare to clean themselves and gain new clothing and um, terrified of... Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um... <laughs> The oh, and as I took off my other clothes, there were uh, pieces of wolf pelt that just kind of like fell out of my boots <laughs> from when I shoved them in before. Sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, Darby gets redressed. As you're doing so, as you uncover uh, the, the manifestation of your patron's uh, weapon, uh, it just begins to laugh and <laughs> says, didn't feel good, did it? Do you want to take a dip? Uh, as you say that, you notice that where your pistol once lay is now a floppy tentacle noodle. <laughs> <laughs> take that as a no, and I'll go grab my amulet off the, the edge. Sure. <laughs> sure. You, you're fine. You're redressed, and the uh, feeling is returning. Uh, Udinar finally manages several minutes later to end up in the same situation uh, where he's in new clothing uh, and tingly but no longer numb. What now? What state do you leave the pool in? Uh, Using the controls, I'm going to reset it as best I can to how it was to the way that we found it. So lights off, bars out, or bars gone. Jets and off. No, yeah, no jets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think as a precaution, though, we should leave the bars closed. Mm-hmm. Um. Any particular reason why? If for whatever reason something else wants that heart back. Mm, good call. I mean, that's okay, why so... we should take you with us. It's too dangerous to leave it here. I think making it easier to get is probably the poor decision. 
And it'll be harder if it's with us. Because we're awesome. Well, I mean, you do make a good point that it could probably power the city really well. There has to be something magical with it to exist and continue beating. Maybe that's not magic we want to get involved in, though. <laughs> that seems pretty, I mean, pretty bad juju down there. But why else are we here? For a ring. Well, let's just not forget the warning that the we one. read on the doors outside. Just remember, let's have a little, little wariness. I mean, Whoever this guy was, he cannot leave this room. That was point. Yeah, he's not. We're just putting his heart somewhere else. So if he ever tries to leave this room, he won't have a heart. I don't know. He'll the have fact, to go find that. The fact that the heart the still heart? beats. I don't know, man. What if he can reform around the heart? Oh, Lord. Oh, well, why would his head be in a cage? Because the heart's down there. Anywho. Even if we did want to get it, it's in a box and chained down. If anything, it should be destroyed. Well, I think that it, had there been a way to destroy it, they, the ones who built all of this probably would have done it. That's what worries me. I don't like the idea of something like that existing that long without repercussions of death. Well, that's why we should throw it into Spira. I don't know that I like the idea of a city powered by magical undeath either. <laughs> well, that ship what sailed else? a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little different. That thing makes me nauseous, <laughs> thinking about it. Well, I guess if we gave it to Spira, wouldn't that, quote-unquote, destroy the heart, though? Like, like, that thing, the Twice King's heart would be consumed by the city. Yeah. So, that argument, at least, is pretty sound for destroying it. You can see that, Udenar agrees. Hmm. But how would we know if that even works? That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, well, Spira has many more measures of destroying something of this magnitude than we do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe one of those ghosts will just eat it. <laughs> um, I look at Egg all, like weirdly, <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> I believe whoever yeah. built this place was far smarter than we are. If they had a way to truly rid of it, they would have done so. Yeah. Look, just because we walk into traps without thinking about it doesn't mean they're better than us. <laughs> Isaac just points to the hole in his chest from the spike <laughs> that stabbed him earlier. <laughs> Edelyn lifts, pull, pulls down her collar a little bit, and there's like a bite, just like <laughs> out of her shoulder. No horrible teeth marks. I'm getting, I'm more and more for this idea of finding what we came for and trying to find a way out. Ask. Right, let's just call dealing with the, the heart in the pool like plan F. We're saying we're here to loot stuff for not taking the heart. Why do we come here? That's not even what we came here for. We came here for stuffs. He has a point. <laughs> stuffs for magical variety. Can we at least agree? To look around a little bit more and maybe we'll come back to the heart yeah that's what I'm saying Fine. heart is plan F I don't want to carry that heart around 
It's fr it's freaking Plan me F out. When we're fucked. that's that's fair. I don't think we should be carrying it around in here. Yes, I think if we're F taking that, I think if we're taking that heart out of that pool, we need to take it out of this room entirely immediately. I don't want it to accidentally. Right. We'll do that find an arm, last and then we've we got a heart all. arm thing trying to claw at us or something. Heart arm. Yeah. Well, if we find an it's arm like, or a leg in the next yeah. room. Uh, the heart is a pump, and then it's pumping into that arm, and then that arm works. You don't know, man. Muscles. <laughs> if it's there's like a battery. one thing that Egg understands, it's muscles. <laughs> so, I'm going to walk up to a door and just start looking at it. Whoops, didn't mean to grab your door. Uh, so taking a look at the door, it is large and metal, and you don't see an obvious sign of opening it. Oh, great. Another one of these. What do you all make of this? I'll go over there and start looking at the door also. Okay. Anybody else? Sure. You can go to the other door. Maybe his dick is in there. So everybody give me a <laughs> first, or I guess inception, investigation check. Inception check? Yeah, I was, Whoa. yeah, investigation and perception. <laughs> uh, Pedalin and Egg are the first to realize that there appears to be something missing from this door that might enable you to open it. Fair enough, uh, it looks as though there's, there's a place where you could maybe put in an object uh, that would act as like a handle of some sort, or maybe a bar. Um, the... Darby, for whatever reason, is just lost while looking at the... Uh, <laughs> the like, you're taking a look at the door, and you're like, okay, so it's a flat door. I've seen these before. There's got to be a switch or something nearby, and you're like, oh, man, this thing is like really thick as you kind of like reach out and tap on it, and it's like really sturdy, and you don't see any hinges. Key. Where does this goddamn key go? Um, Didn't, did somebody say eventually... something? Uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, did somebody say something about having found a rod or yep. something in a body? Mm -hmm. We found a rod in the ashes of one of the vamps we killed. Who's Who's got that now? It doesn't uh, matter. So you pull that out, remember, and you see yeah. that the rod itself is much too small to fit. And it, for whatever, like it's it's not going to be a cylindrical object. It's going to have a weird shape to it, uh, okay. like uh, like a hex key, to put it into real real thoughts. Hmm. Everybody knows what a hex key is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Darby, you will eventually reach the same conclusion after some time uh, pondering and meander or pondering and considering the door. I mean, have you ever really thought about how a door feels? Have we? So the the rod that we found is too small. Yeah, the rod that you found is like. Like a scepter without like a bulbous head. Hmm. What about that wand that Udnar found in like the first room? Um, yeah, actually... I'll pull it out. And the ring. Why not? So you're now holding the wand and a ring. Darby, what are you doing? Well, I didn't know if maybe it was like a a smooth round wand or if it had some kind of carvy to it, but I mean I, I had kind of given you guys a description of it last time, but like it's smaller even than it's thinner than the rod. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh Darby, Darby, do you still have that steak? From the table? We may have lost. Rumble. No, I'm here. Oh. I was going through my inventory. Oh. 
Aren't the, I mean, aren't yeah, I kept it as a keepsake. Well, aren't the stakes kind of are aren't they hex hexagonal? No, they're cylindrical. No? Why did I think that they were roughly carved like that? Hope. Uh, going through my bag, that uh, that water skin that we found. Uh huh. Can I pop it open and give it a sniff? Does it smell like the the water in the basin? It does not. Okay. And then just on another note, the the amount of blood that we used to activate the brace that would it have consumed that entire vial? Uh, I think we had determined yes. Okay. Then I but it should still it. be glowing. Yeah, I'm just making sure because I still have it in my bag. The the vial. Mm-hmm. Well, the bangle doesn't look like it would fit now, does it? No. Can't, like, slot it in there and rotate it? No. Sorry, can't you just pick this? <laughs> I'm going to hold up my tiny lock picking tools <laughs> well, and just point to this hole in the door. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can't you do it? It's not exactly a lock. I mean, it's keeping the door from opening. That's like the same as a lock. Are the two doors identical? Well, nobody has told me that they go look at the other ones. Well, I'll go look at Darby's door. As you go to take a look at it, you notice that the shape is different. So... The western door is like a hex key, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then and the, the eastern door is like a like a star hex. What so about those two doors pointed? we passed on the way up here? Well, 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 hex implies six. Well, I don't know. I don't really know what you mean by star hex. Um, so one of them looks like a hexagon, and then the other one looks like a six-pointed star. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I get it. Okay, so I'm going to take take a note here. I'm going to go take a look at uh the other door down here. Yeah, take the door with you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you 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 head down take a look at those doors and uh you see that they pretty clearly have a have a bar and lever mechanism and they are barred from this side. Hey, you guys, maybe we should take a look at these ones first. The ones that be might good. be holding something terrible from us. Uh, does the bar fit in either of these doors? What? I'll go down and join them. The rod? Yeah, the rod. No, no, no. These don't need a... They, they don't have a, oh, a rod. They're barred hole. from our side. We can unlock it. Yeah. Uh, we're the real monsters. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have known that after we killed that princess. You guys killed a princess? Well, I didn't kill anybody. I mean, sometimes you gotta kill people. It this is a misunderstanding. A princess? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's a story for another time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We have bigger issues right now, Udinar. Yeah. I mean, they were like going refugees. to that. Jeez. <laughs> Doesn't make your story any better. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. If we're I'm going to this, to this door. left door first. Nope, nope. Don't want to steal your door trying to move me. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> Sticky doors. <laughs> Can't open them, but they just follow you around. <laughs> okay. I'm going to investigate the barring mechanism. Okay. 
All right. As you're taking a look at the door, and I'm not going to say just the barring mechanism because it'll be nice. It's not Hackmaster. Uh, you see that there doesn't appear to be any sort of catch or release uh, here whatsoever, but you do see that the the bar itself does have a lock on the side. So you'll have you'll have to remove that lock uh, before you can lift the bar. Uh, also, in your investigation, you notice what looked to be uh, some sort of trigger line, uh, or or almost like um, a means of determining whether or not somebody has passed through the door. Hmm. Is there a way to disable that component of it? You can certainly try. Thieves tools. Uh, through your best effort, you believe you severed the connecting line uh, that whatever whatever it was connected to on the other side, it is no longer going to, to activate once you open the door. And then the lock, the key that I found, does it fit? It does not. <sighs> it's never easy. I'm going to attempt to pick it. Uh, the easiest lockpick of your life uh, with a natural 20 there. You know, you would think they would have better security here given the circumstances, but they really well, cheaped out on these locks. S security works the other way. Hmm. Right, but you this know, is I'm like... a little bit surprised you would say that, Darby, considering the <laughs> encounters with their security that we've had so far. Right, and you go through all that effort to put all these traps in the way, and then you cheap out at the very end with a this lock that's in shambles like this. That's what I'm saying. That's why we shouldn't be leaving this heart here. Yeah, you know, when I buy locks, I make sure that they're at least 1,200 year locks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Look, they blew all their money on the blood magic door. And then, <laughs> uh... They didn't have that much left over. For the interior traps. Well, you know, it's all about that curb appeal. Yeah. It's got that signage up front. Yeah. It's almost a nice sign it. for us that this one was so easy to get into because maybe it's not as bad as the other stuff. We can only hope. I'm going to commission someone to help me remove the, the bar from the door. Yeah, I'll you don't help need you. Any help? It's just lifting the bar. But oh. sure, uh, Darby and Udinar combined easily lift the <laughs> the small metal rod keeping the door from opening. <laughs> the other metal like rod. The other doors. What shape is this metal rod? Not the correct shape. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask everyone to back up. And then does the door push or pull? It would push. Uh, and then I'm going to move away and then cast Mage Hand to ease the door open. How much force can Mage Hand put out? Ten pounds? Not enough. Mm. All right, going all in, I'm going to go push the door then. All right, Darby strains a bit, and the uh, metal doors, which haven't moved in an age, eventually begin to groan as they sway inward. Uh, do you follow them, or do you just kind of keep pushing the door in? I'm going to peek into the room before opening it fully. Peeking into the room, you see what looks to be maybe a hexagonal chamber of some sort. There's a small uh, dip where you would step down below, uh, and you notice that it appears to be full of water. Does it give off the same smell? No. It is, in fact, quite stagnant smelling, old and foul. Hmm. Can I get a, uh, a map reveal? 
Well, once you fully open the door, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're fully opening the door. So, uh, within the room, you know, the hexagonal room, uh, it looks like if you, like, there's maybe a three to four inch gap where you would step down, uh, and then it is just covered in water. The floor mat not supposed to be there? No. Okay. <laughs> How is it in there? Is it dry? I hope it's dry. Sure hope there's not water. <laughs> uh, given the other door <clears throat> immediately bamboozling me as soon as I stepped in, I'd like to investigate before I walk in. Okay. To the best of your knowledge, you discovered whatever means of measuring entry there was and severed the line. Again, right, it looks clear. it's not Hackmaster. If it's if it's something that triggers on that, you'll find it. All right. Hey, walks over to yeah. take a look-see. All right, before we do that, I want to take a five-minute break. So